In this section, we will look at how groups will be managed within the company using PIM. In this first part, we will spend some time looking at the concepts of scopes and types in regards to groups. One of the problems with groups is that they look different in AD compared to FIM. Let's start by looking in AD. If you want to create a group in AD, you will see we get choices about scope and type. After making these choices, we will end up with having stored a value in the group type attribute. As with the user account control attribute we discussed in the previous section, here is a bitmap defining the scope and type of the group. We have to understand the values in this group type attribute in order to set it correctly in AD. There are articles like this one on MSDN that describes the different bits. There is, however, some mathematics involved that will make the actual value stored become negative as we saw when we looked at the groups we created. This will result in a list of values that look like this. In FIM, however, groups are defined in a completely different way. The best way to look at it is to look at how the groups in FIM are defined in the schema. Looking at the bindings of the group resource, we'll see a number of attributes that are relevant when creating groups. The Type attribute in FIM has three possible values, compared to the two you see in AD. The scope is the same as in AD. But in FIM, we also have the ability to create dynamic groups and have force approvals for joining groups. These settings are found in the Membership Locked and Membership Add Workflow attributes. Membership Locked is Boolean and controls whether the group is dynamic or static. The Membership Add Workflow defines if and if so, what kind of approval workflow to use. If we are to use owner approval, the group needs to have an owner. But we actually have two different attributes defining owners in the FIM scheme. We have both owner and displayed owner. The owner attribute is the one used for owner approval and it is multivalued making it possible to have multiple owners defined. The displayed owner is a single value attribute and corresponds to the single value attribute managed by in AD. This was just a quick overview of the differences in the schemas of AD and FIM. But it is vital that we have this understanding when we start to work with groups in FIM. First up, is to import the organizational units in the HR system and create corresponding groups in AD.